and welcome to Relax, Relate with Renfro. I'm your host, Keith Renfro, and today we are going to discuss overcoming your obstacles. But before we get into that, as you know, I'm about healing from the inside out. So I want you to take this particular tip today and utilize it. It's about breathing. When you breathe, most of the time we breathe, we only take in oxygen in half our lungs. When you breathe properly, you take in a full breath, your stomach extends just a little bit. That's a full breath, and you have to, most of the time, concentrate on that. The reason for doing such a thing is because the air that you take in feeds the blood cells, giving it more oxygen, which feeds the brain, giving it more oxygen, allowing you to think clearer, to remain more calm in your daily activity, and to stay focused without a lot of stress involved. So, remember to breathe slow, take your time, at least five minutes a day would be helpful. So, welcome Pastor Sabrina Nottage. Glad to have you on the show. Glad to be here. Okay. What we have here, I'm going to read from this because it is so lengthy mm -hmm. and you have so many accolades here. Uh, she's the mother of five children. She ministers to the prophetic and has the unique gift of teaching God's Word. Pastor Sabrina has, part, has been part of Sarah's Daughters, Agape Women's Center, and Cairo's Ministry, if I said that mm -hmm, correctly, mm -hmm. to name just a few. She has implemented a prayer team at her church and has often does revivals and conferences, youth explosions, and workshops, seminars, and many other special programs, some of which we will talk about today. Pastor Sabrina Nottage is currently serving at the Harvest Army Christian Center, and which she is a, in an in international ministry out of Bronx, New York, under Bishop Collins. She's the founder of, if I say this correctly, incorrectly, you let me know, Shakia's Care Facility? Shekinah's. Shekinah's, sorry, where women are free to be themselves. Shekinah's Care was founded in 2011 and was incorporated September 5th, 2012. She is a life coach and she shares partnerships as president of Life Coaches and Coach Company. She has also written a book, which we will talk about today, called Naked and Not Ashamed. She also did hard lessons, but better choices. She also does poetry. Yes. You have a lot of talents there. Yes. Welcome to the show. Now I we can feel get welcome. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Tell us a little bit about yourself and your profession. Well, I am a life coach. Okay. I'm also an author. I, um, I'm CEO and founder of Shekinah's Care Facility for the uh, Teenage Abuse Center. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, is it strictly for teenagers? Well, also, I uh, implemented young adult women also mm -hmm. from 15 to 30 years old. Okay. A couple of years ago, you faced some difficult decisions. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I've been through a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> in my childhood as well as my adult life. And uh, the challenge is forgiving most of the things that happened to me uh, through the hands of adult people. Okay. Um, but I made decisions, you know, I made some bad decisions as well, not just because of that, but I've been molested as well as raped. But I came through all of that, and now I can tell someone else how to get through it. I understand. Uh, I know those experiences are, in, as a professional therapist myself, and I've treated a lot of women as well as males who have been molested and forcibly raped. So it's a traumatic thing. Mm -hmm. You look well, you, I can feel positive energy coming from you, so that's a good thing. I know you're able to handle it yourself and pass that on to others. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had to make some choices about relocating. Can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I've been wanting to re relocate for years. <laughs> But um, I decided this year mm -hmm. that I wanted a, a different space. I needed a different atmosphere. And so my daughter lives in Georgia, and okay. I wanted to relocate in Georgia. So okay. that's what I did. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about what your short and long-term goals are? Okay. Well, with Shekinah's Care, I want to uh, have the center up and running in four or five months from okay. now. Mm -hmm. I also want to implement a daycare center for women that have kids. Uh, my long-term goal is to not only have it in Georgia, but also have it in Miami. Okay. 
Is that where you're from, Miami? Yes, I'm from Miami. Okay. Uh, when you have this center, I'm curious, is there an age limit for this? Group? Yeah, 15 years old to 30. Uh, is there a particular reason why that age group? Oh, uh, well, I wanted to also, you know, deal with teenagers, but young adult women go through a lot of things that they uh, suppress. Okay. Uh, so I believe that it will help them also uh, to come to the center. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll get more into the book and your mission at this point. We'll be right back with Relax, Relate with Renfro. Keith Renfro with Relax, Relate with Renfro. Today I'm going to give you a tip about why get angry. When you get angry, the reasons for this is because there are statements that you misunderstand. There's a behavior that you misinterpret. There is a body language that you're not reading correctly, perhaps, and even uh, that you hear something incorrectly. So your mind is interpreting something that may not be correct but you're also believing that what you heard or uh, were able to understand that you saw doesn't agree with what you want it to be. As a result, you end up having different bodily functions such as uh, clammy hands, sweating under your arms, you could be getting fidgety, you might even start twitching, your heart races, you have increased breathing. All of these things take effect immediately. The question is why get angry? Because when you do, all you're going to end up doing is behaving in a fashion that's going to be more detrimental to you or the situation or another person. Because then you end up getting loud, there's screaming, there could be throwing of objects, people get shot, they get stabbed. All these things can take place during that time. The question again is, why get angry? When the only thing that's occurred is that what you heard doesn't agree with what you believe it should be. If you stop for a moment, take a deep breath, think about what you heard, and reevaluate that it's not as serious as you were about to jump the gun and believe. If you do that, then you will be able to manage whatever the situation or conversation is about. In doing so, you reduce your stress level, you are able to resolve the situation more peacefully perhaps even to a, uh, a degree that you would like it to be. But all of these things are dealing with anger management. If you're flying off the handle right away, all of these things that I just noticed or just stated are taking place in an instant. You need to get a grip. You need to be more in touch with yourself, how you feel, how you're expressing yourself, and basically what it is that you're hearing. Because even when you're angry, you don't hear what is actually being said because your mind is racing so fast that you want to say something before the person talking to you finishes. Slow down, take a deep breath, reevaluate it, rethink the situation. Think about that. No reason to be getting angry. Welcome back to Relax, Relate with Renfro. My guest today is Pastor Sabrina. Knowledge, and we're discussing how to overcome your obstacles. Again, uh, Pastor Sabrina, you have come through a lot of painful experiences. Yes. Um, I understand that you've had some of these uh, horrendous sexual experiences with family members. Yes. Uh, there's a, a, unfortunately a prolific experience with that in the black community. Yes. And. Uh, I too work at trying to overcome those kinds of issues for people. I used to do uh, emergency care for women who got raped mm -hmm. at the hospital. They'd see us before they would even see the doctor. Wow. Okay. Uh, so can you tell us um, what are some of the obstacles that you see that the pe people have to overcome besides this particular sexual assault issue? Well, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you, even though you're, you know, you're the victim of abuse or whatever, having, you have to also forgive the person that did it, you know, and 
that's one of the one of the things that helps you to be you know maintain freedom. Yes. Yeah. Is forgiveness. Right. And also love and pray. Mm -hmm. You pray for the individual that had you know that, that has done you harm, mm -hmm. because if you do not, you won't be able to go forth okay. in whatever capacity because you'll always be. Uh, traumatized mm -hmm. by your past experiences. Yeah, it's kind of what we call in the profession PTSD, mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I try to get people to understand that when they experience something in their life that resembles any part of that particular experience, it resonates in their body and in a very uncomfortable way. Mm -hmm. So trying to get them past that, as you would do, is try to heal them from that wound. It can become a journey. Yeah, it is a journey. Okay. Uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, Naked and the Shame is the book. Uh, where can we purchase, purchase it? This you book? can also you can purchase it at Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, or AuthorHouse.com. Okay, that's great. Uh, if they wanted to reach you, how could they reach you? Uh, you know, as someone is going through this storm and they're trying to overcome the obstacle, what advice would you give them to get past their particular issues? Well, you have to be open and honest about the situation. Okay. Even when you go to AAA, they tell you it's just a group therapy. Right. It's therapy for you to journal. Mm -hmm. It's therapy for you to tell and open your, you know, it opens your eyes to understanding that not only you went through the abuse, but someone else also. Yeah. I find that a lot of times people think that they're the only ones that have had the yes, experience uh -huh. until they open up, like you say, yeah. and they start talking to someone, as, as I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes, uh -huh. uh, do you find that when you talk to the girls or they come to you for support, that they just break down and don't know what else to do? How do you get them past that point? Well, most of the time that the, the abuse uh, woman or teenager, they won't open up to you like that. Mm -hmm. You have to open up to them. Okay. And most of the time when I meet any individual that has been abused, I open sure. myself up to them by letting them know what happened to me. Okay. And then I find out that when I open myself up to them, they are, they're opening their self up to me. Okay. And I find the same experience because it kind of is kind of a bonding process yes. that helps them know that they're not the only ones that have... You can relate. You can relate to the pain mm -hmm. and the anguish that they feel. Yes. And obviously, when they see where you are now, having gotten through it, it provides some support for them. Yes. So I think that's great. Again, uh, naked and not ashamed. So what prompted you to write that book then? Oh, 2003, I began to write. I didn't know that it was going to be such a long journey ah. uh, in writing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I found out something along the way. God, you know, just exposed some truth. Okay. And this is why it's called Naked and Not Ashamed because it's the truth. It's the naked truth. Uh, some most, but for most of us that have been abused, we lie to ourselves a lot. Sure. Even about how we're feeling or what we think about other people. Sure. Because we're ashamed or we're afraid of losing them. So I found out that when I began to journal and write about mm -hmm. my situation, I found certain things in myself that I never knew about, mm -hmm. that I was hiding. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what an abu abuse victim goes through. Mm -hmm. they, they try to help everybody else or they find themselves helping people that are broken as well. Because mm -hmm. most people that are broken find broken people. Yeah. And they don't mm -hmm. even know that they are dysfunctional. Correct. So mm -hmm. it's when you begin to take a look at yourself and you can say, you know what, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. And my problem is that I have been a victim of abuse. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to accept that and look at it totally different from just allow, allowing yourself, you know, not to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything about it because I was going through too much hurt mm -hmm. and I wasn't forgiving and I wasn't living at the same time. Okay. But when I begin to write, I let go. And that's what we have to do, let go. I find that what you said was very interesting and helpful that to start journaling mm -hmm. your thoughts and your feelings about that experience or any experience begins to reveal a lot about yourself from the inside. Mm -hmm. and you begin to, that's, that's a good healing yes, process to start is. with. Mm -hmm. uh, is this some of the programs that you would have in your, your center? Oh yes, most definitely. We're gonna have uh, theater, Okay. Well, you could actually, you know, drama, ah. dramalization. Most of the women yeah. that goes through so much drama, no trauma, they could do drama, okay. you know. <laughs> okay. 
So uh, play out their, their yeah, feelings and actions. Yeah, play out their feelings and everything. And yeah. the other thing will be um, exercise and spa, like treating them like Qu women, queens. queens. Yeah, most of the time when we abuse, we don't pamper ourselves. We don't love ourselves, yeah. you know, and then we don't love others at times. So in this center, you're going to get uh, love. You're going to get pampered. Mm -hmm. You're going to get uh, encouraged. You're going to get empowered. Okay. You're going to be inspired, you know, and you're going to work. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I, I, I look forward to seeing the center. And hopefully, you know, I, I would be willing to come and speak to your uh, ladies and the guys, too, because mm -hmm. they definitely need it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of guys coming out of prison have this issue to deal with, and they really keep that, excuse the expression, down low. Yeah. <laughs> Just because they don't want to talk about that. Yeah. So we're going to be right back with Relax Relate with Renfro with Dr. Pastor Nottage in just a moment. Keith Renfro with Relax, Relate with Renfro. Today I'm going to give you a tip about why get angry. When you get angry, the reasons for this is because there are statements that you misunderstand. There's a behavior that you misinterpret. There is a body language that you're not reading correctly, perhaps, and even uh, that you hear something incorrectly. So your mind is interpreting something that may not be correct but you're also believing that what you heard or uh, were able to understand that you saw doesn't agree with what you want it to be. As a result, you end up having different bodily functions such as uh, clammy hands, sweating under your arms, you could be getting fidgety, you might even start twitching, your heart races, you have increased breathing. All of these things take effect immediately. The question is why get angry? Because when you do, all you're going to end up doing is behaving in a fashion that's going to be more detrimental to you or the situation or another person. Because then you end up getting loud, there's screaming, there could be throwing of objects, people get shot, they get stabbed. All these things can take place during that time. The question again is, why get angry? When the only thing that's occurred is that what you heard doesn't agree with what you believe it should be. If you stop for a moment, take a deep breath, think about what you heard, and reevaluate that it's not as serious as you are about to jump the gun and believe. If you do that, then you will be able to manage whatever the situation or conversation is about. In doing so, you reduce your stress level, you are able to resolve the situation more peacefully perhaps even to a, uh, a degree that you would like it to be. But all of these things are dealing with anger management. If you're flying off the handle right away, all of these things that I just noticed or just stated are taking place in an instant. You need to get a grip. You need to be more in touch with yourself, how you feel, how you're expressing yourself, and basically what it is that you're hearing. Because even when you're angry, you don't hear what is actually being said because your mind is racing so fast that you want to say something before the person talking to you finishes. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Reevaluate it. Rethink the situation. Think about that. No reason to be getting angry. Welcome back to Relax, Relate with Renfro. My guest today is Pastor Sabrina Nottage, and we're discussing about overcoming obstacles. We've talked about how she has been sexually abused and raped uh, early in her life by relatives and her process in not only overcoming these obstacles on her own, but how she's reached out through her ministry to help other girls who have had the same experience. Again, I want to applaud you for what you're doing because I know in our community this is a prolific uh, experience that uh, I would be glad to see eradicated 100%. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about your book, Naked and Not Ashamed. Well, in the book, I have a lot of poetry in there. Okay. Uh, it's mostly on, air. mostly every chapter has a poetry. Mm -hmm. um, but the poetry is meaningful. 
Um, one of the um, po uh, poems that I have in there is called Let Go. Okay. And that's in chapter 10, ch uh, Challenging Transition. Mm -hmm. Most of the times when we're going through transition, we don't understand that there's a reason for going through that uh, so that transformation can take place. Let me ask you before you go on, what do you mean by transition? Well, um, when you're in a situation of now, mm -hmm. like you're trying to process going to your destiny mm -hmm. or trying to go somewhere in life, transition happens. Mm -hmm. You're stagnated sometimes. You don't know why you're going through it. You, don't, you can't see the future at that point, mm -hmm. but you know it's there. So uh, I call it transition. Okay. And um, we have to visit transition before transformation get there. Okay. In, in your book, in chapter six, you uh, have a chapter on songs of an ugly duckling. Can you explain what that means? Well, songs of an ugly duckling is about uh, your weaknesses, mm -hmm. your failures, your strengths, of uh, the ugly things that appear in, in your mind over and over and over and trying to get through it. And also letting go, letting go of the hurt, letting go of the people, letting go of everything that you need so that you can move forward. Okay. I, I did want to say this as you were speaking, what kept coming to my mind was when a person goes through these kinds of trauma, not drama, trauma, mm -hmm. so often they get into deep depression mm, yeah. and it becomes a difficult task to be able to pull themselves out of that. What advice would you have for them when they start feeling this way? Afterwards? Prayer. <laughs> I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I got through it through prayer. I mean, I stayed before the Lord. Um, in prayer mm -hmm. and not only that support groups you need somebody to support you and you need some sometimes you need a person that won't judge you right. that won't look at you differently because you went through certain things mm -hmm. but they'll be there they'll you know make you laugh they'll make you smile and they'll check up on you they'll be accountable for you support. Um, yeah you need support support groups you got women groups you have yeah. church groups you know but even if you don't have a support group, you make it. You make a support group for yourself. I agree. I, I think one of the things, when they seek the support, because maybe a lot of the issues have been with family members, they have to learn to separate themselves separate, from those families. That's it. And that it's okay to separate yes. from the family. Yes. See, a lot of people don't want to do that because they get a sense of guilt and feel that they should stay there. Not only uh, that, because you, you become a victim of abuse over and over exactly. again. And yeah. you never, you know, you gotta start believing in yourself. You have to speak to yourself, encourage yourself. Exactly. That's one of the things, what, how I got through depression. I was depressed a lot of times, wanted to commit sure. suicide. Sure. Yeah. You know, a lot of things that comes our way, but the, the main thing that I stood on the most is the word of God. So that helped me get through a lot of things. Excellent. And support groups. Okay. So tell us, uh, what are some of the other projects that you're working on right now? Well, um, I'm doing two, I have a finished or completed workbooks for, our, for the uh, Shekinah's Care Center. Okay. I'm working on a relationship book. Okay. It deals with marriages and single people, mm -hmm. as well as Naked and Not Ashamed too. Okay, so tell us, where can we find the book again? Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles, okay. or AuthorHouse.com. This is a heavy book. It is very beneficial. I encourage everyone to take an opportunity to get this. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show, Dr. Pastor. I'm sorry. Sit. You can be a doctor. Yeah, doctor. Yeah, you can be a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor, right? <laughs> Pastor she, uh, Sabrina Nottage, thanks yes. for having you on. Thank you for having me. I want me. to make a closing by giving an affirmation. As I say, I like to heal from the inside out. And people who suffer from high blood pressure, an affirmation that you might find very useful and helpful for you is to say to yourself that I joyously release the past. I am at peace. You have to understand that there's a spiritual connection to holding on to issues from the past that affect your blood pressure. So when you let go of that past, you'll begin to heal your own body with the help of God and prayer. Good night. See you soon. Keith Renfro with Relax Relate with Renfro. Today I'm going to give you a tip about why get angry. 
When you get angry, the reasons for this is because there are statements that you misunderstand. There's a behavior that you misinterpret. There is a body language that you're not reading correctly, perhaps, and even uh, that you hear something incorrectly. So your mind is interpreting something that may not be correct, but you're also believing that what you heard or uh, were able to understand that you saw doesn't agree with what you want it to be. As a result, you end up having different bodily functions, such as uh, clammy hands, sweating under your arms. You could be getting fidgety. You might even start twitching. Your heart races. You have increased breathing. All of these things take effect immediately. The question is, why get angry? Because when you do, all you're going to end up doing is behaving in a fashion that's going to be more detrimental to you or the situation or another person. Because then you end up getting loud, there's screaming, there could be throwing of objects, people get shot, they get stabbed. All these things can take place during that time. The question again is, why get angry? when the only thing that's occurred is that what you heard doesn't agree with what you believe it should be. If you stop for a moment, take a deep breath, think about what you heard, and reevaluate that it's not as serious as you were about to jump the gun and believe. If you do that, then you will be able to manage whatever the situation or conversation is about. In doing so, you reduce your stress level, you are able to resolve the situation more peacefully, perhaps even to a, uh, a degree that you would like it to be. But all of these things are dealing with anger management. If you're flying off the handle right away, all of these things that I just noticed or just stated are taking place in an instant. You need to get a grip. You need to be more in touch with yourself, how you feel, how you're expressing yourself, and basically what it is that you're hearing. Because even when you're angry, you don't hear what is actually being said because your mind is racing so fast that you want to say something before the person talking to you finishes. Slow down. Take a deep breath. Reevaluate it. Rethink the situation. Think about that. No reason to be getting angry.